any hip hop person sees this. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your boy Dacian. Happy New Year, 2023. Let's go ahead and get started. I have a list of 20. I'm not doing 50. That is OD. Who is sitting there that long looking at that? Bro, I don't need to know your top 50 because if we understand the definition of an album, if I'm correct, an album is about 10, 11 songs, 10, 12. Some people do eight, some people do seven, but about 10, 11 songs, look matter that, about 50 minutes to an hour. There's no way that you just, for one day, 50 top albums. Like, bro, that's, no, there's no. If you have not made no music like Metro Boomin, I don't want to hear no 50 top albums at all. It makes no sense. Um, but no, let's go ahead and get into it. Number 20. Let me see if I can put it like right here. <clears throat> but for number 20, I have uh, a few good things by Saba. Now, hear me out. The reason why this is 20 is literally because his freshman album was just too good. His freshman album was just too good. And this, in my opinion, was a drop off and understanding that he wants to bring back his music to the city, but it just didn't give me like what it gave. But what care for me was as far as a project, as far as an album, as far as connect, Connecting to the, to the to the music and understanding his point of view, um, it just wasn't where I wanted to be. But it was still a good project for this year. Nineteen, I got Big Crit. Digital Roses Don't Die. The reason I have this at nineteen, love how he tried to do the Avatar situation, and it was cool. I, I, I rock with it. I, I like it. It was it was nice. It wasn't like OD, but I like it. All right, number number eighteen. I have Benny the Butcher. Ten of a talk for you. A very surprising album, uh, and I found about this artist this year. Uh, his project was more put together. Uh, uh, lyrics was raw and authentic as well. Uh, I like the flow of the album. I was able to enjoy it. It wasn't something that will put you to sleep. Um, and a lot of albums that was released this year put me to sleep. It was just a lot of, yeah, it was a lot of the same thing. And and it, it, a lot of people cannot go toe for toe with J. Cole. And that's just a fact. Like, a lot of people are not going toe for toe. And, you know, a lot of people skip, skip over verses just to listen to J. Cole's verse. When you actually listen to his, on that song, he going bar for bar. And, and that, that's what I felt like brought out uh, J. Cole's verse of the year. In my opinion. So, yeah. Um, 17, I have Little Sims. No, thank you. Uh, very good, introspective woman rapper. I, I, there, was, there wasn't, for this year, for a collective, when it comes to, like, w women. And, and, and listen, I am a lyricist type of dude. So, when I give you the rest of this list, it's going to make sense. I'm a lyricist, uh, meaning... Uh, mental health understanding you know i can rock with it i can go anywhere with it that that's the type of person i am when it comes to this type of music so that's just where i'm at with that uh number 16 i have conway the machine guys don't make mistakes um i think conway the machine and benny the butcher were probably the two most unknown rappers that surprise well no 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 they were the two, I would say, old, older generation of generational type of rappers. Like they're not old. It's just the timing of of their music would be perfect in the '90s. It would be album of the year in the '90s. Just not 2022. And that's no offense to their craft because they are great artists. And I would not take them away, or take that away from them. Fifteen Corday from a bird's eye view. Love the love the meaning of the title. Love the meaning of the album. Love the connection between his brother being in jail and speaking speaking from a second point of view from what he sees and what his what his brother sees. That's uh, currently in jail and ho hopefully he gets out soon. Uh, 
so uh, this album was good um a lot of trendy tracks um there wasn't one big heavy hitter for me uh that would like make me want to play this album over and over and over and over but it was a good project and it shows the growth in corday and he's damn he's he's young bro like by the time he gets j cole age like it is gonna have instant classics on back to back to back to back um 14 my favorite i would say my favorite album name for the whole year would be earth gang ghetto gods it had high expectations and i I, i'm really like i really gave it like an 8 out of 10 8.5 out of 10 like it when i heard it, i was like okay this might be the album of the year but when i went back and i listened to it again and I was like, okay, now I understand why people don't have it up because there is some inconsistencies in the in the in the forwardness of the album, um, which is nothing wrong with that. They had their own visions, they had their own uh, aspects of this album. But again, I do love when rappers focus on mental health, checking on your big brothers during you know towards the end um, of the of the track. Um, sonic, uh, sonically sounded great. Uh, but other other than other than that, that that's one of those those are a couple of reasons why I have that um, at fourteen. But I love I love that the album name is so fire, bro. I'm, no cap, like really fire. Um, thirteen. I have Westside Boogie, more more black superheroes. Um, this is probably this is a, a part of the I think five or six album al- hip hop albums that. Focus on mental health. Focus on bettering yourself. Focusing on uh, overcoming a lot of BS and and not letting the world affect you. And you know what I'm saying. And the way that he related to his family and it was a dedication uh, to each family member that he he's associated with uh, was beautiful. Uh, his vocals is always amazing, and his perspective of how the way the way that he thinks is always different. It's never the same. It's not. It's, it's, it's not um, it's not basic and I put them at 13 because one there's too many good albums this year a lot of good albums came out this year and, and it's ridiculous it's, it's 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 OD it's OD so I, I had to put them up top 15 top 15 at least if you had a 10 to 15 he had to be there he had to be there for sure Coast Contra apartment 505 I don't want to say it, but this this group got it, and just just for this to be their first album, their first project, it was really good. I, I felt I felt the pain, I felt the the progress, I felt the triumph, I felt the, and the, the understanding of wanting to be a better man, maybe understanding of bringing yourself around four different individuals, and y'all stuck in one apartment, and y'all made something beautiful, like. This group, I don't want to call them the new, you know, Wu Tang or Three Six. My, this is Coast Contra, bro. Coast Contra, Coast Contra. This album was really good. Now, it didn't have. I think the only thing I feel like it didn't have is like the big banger. I feel like their big banger was with Sierra, but that was a single. So if they would have had that on here, but it would. It still wouldn't hit the same. Number eleven. This is gonna cause some controversy. <laughs> I have uh, Metro Boomin Her- Heroes and Villains. Now hear me out. I was not expecting this album to be that good, based on the constant hits. Like he did. Like he got so many hits on this album, and the the fact that it's already trending everywhere and. Each song has its meaning, and in especially the song that he has with ASAP Rocky and Takeoff is amazing. That song is flat out amazing, but not only that, he even had I think my favorite part of this album. My favorite part of this album, and the reason why I put it at number 11, is just the placement. Like, he knew where to put everybody at, especially Chris Brown. Like, come on, bro. If you know, you know about Chris Brown's situation and, and just the placement of putting him on that part and singing that little section, 
that was that was points because it is just i understand what he's what, what the direction now now does it like flow consistently like a lot of like albums such as coast contra or or uh west side boogie or uh big crit of a uh, few good things or something no but it has what unfortunately those other albums do not which is constant hits which is something that's gonna be played on the radio with it it, it sucks, and I, I'm a very authentic person. But that you at uh, this point in time, especially if I'm, if I'm rating your know, hip hop, hip hop album, and some people will put that in rap, but some people don't even know the difference between the two. So these ten, like bro, like these ten are like they're they're it, like literally they're it. Some albums you can tell was meant to be released in 2020. Some albums you can tell what will supposed to be released in 2021. But it does not negate which one was better for this year because they still had a team. They still they still marketed it for this year. They could have still put it out in 2020, but they decided not to because it wasn't ready. But um, at number 10, I have Joey Badass with 2000. Now, a lot of people will put this top five, but not me. And here's why. Oh, this is gonna sound bad. His comeback was great. His music selection is great. But compared to the other nine that I have ahead of him, it was more fluid. I connected with it more. The album sounded better. The It wasn't just look what i got because it, it's it's he had a couple of songs where it was like okay cool we, we rock with you back you know you 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 run new york cool cool and then he had the songs where it's just like okay it sound like you just doing a lot of braggadocious rap i got a biz i got this and it's like bro i don't care about that like nobody cares about that i mean some kids might but not me no no bro i don't I don't care about that but he's a phenomenal rapper and he knows where his placement is at but it for me i yeah i, I just i loved i loved every I, every album that's on this top 20 list i loved so for this to be number 10 no i, I did hey joey I, I don't know if you ever listen to this bro i don't know if you would even watch this bro i'm not like these other dudes I love your stuff. You are needed in this rap game. But also, get your acting bag too, bro. Get your acting bag, get your album bag, like, get that. I just, I don't know, I felt like this was meant for 2020 and not 2022. Number nine, I have Abso Herbert, another one which was meant for 2020 he even said in multiple interviews and y'all can quote me or y'all can look at interviews yourself he had a he already had a plan but he had to push it back this album was needed multiple times by app so he i feel like he needed this album this should have been his second album you know what i'm saying like that that's how good it was like based on his previous projects and based on the the aspect of he will get so deep and and man a beautiful project like this and had it he reached so many levels yeah, i can i can get this to my niggas and I, I can get this to my my own boys that's trying to do better in mental health i can do this for myself if i want to get introspective but he also taught he's also doing his braggadocious stuff like he he was a good episode of me is top three rappers bro because <laughs> this dude he he runs laps and and, and this album flows as it should and this should have been his sophomore album sophomore or freshman album but of course you know you know time changes and you can't really affect that but this is this is the best episode i've seen best dumbed down version that we all needed number eight i have vince staples from Park apart broke my heart sonically sounded great great album um, <sighs> this is probably his best project 
his best project and aspect of growth um, in the music industry, growth with within itself. Just like uh, Absol and Joey, like they they are all growing introspectively. Um, but this that this album just puts everything in perspective. I love the melodies and I love how Vince Staples can always tell a story the way he wants to tell them up the story. Like that that that's the most important part. And this album flowed so great. So number eight, Vince Staples. Number seven, <laughs> the album that saved Drake's twenty twenty two. I mean that that dude's rich forever. He be alright. But Drake's in Twenty One Savage is her loss. This was one surprise to. <laughs> I'm gonna say it for y'all. I feel like people probably wanted J Cole in Twenty One to do this, but the fact that Drake did it, it meant it meant everything to everybody. And I I really like the album. Uh, not only did he put his neck, his his foot back on everybody's neck, um, as a you know top four rapper. Yes, I said top four. So let me stop playing. As one of the top three rappers in this game in our generation, he also had not the assistance, but he had the um, the what he missed. Like Twenty One Savage is what is what Drake and J. Cole miss all the time. Like they're not gonna they can't fake that. They can't act like that. So they have Twenty One Savage on there and and don't get it twisted. Twenty one Savage can rap, bro. Like he can rap. But as far as putting a project together, Twenty One Savage has not had like like a full project where you was like, damn that's album of the year. That that is it. Like so this right here if this was like 2005 this would be a mixtape but i love that how they put this album together and it sounds great and tony savage killed it drake killed it number six push your t is almost dropped now i think it was the very very smart of him to get half of the songs produced by pharrell and half of the songs produced by kanye west it gave you a different introspective of, of I keep on using that word of, of the album and I feel like based on his previous work some things were probably more too gritty for people to understand or too too it, too much or you know it just it wasn't it wasn't flowing or he would just he had a little stint where there was like the six or the seven or eight song albums but this was a perfect 12 songs pure gold pure gold um anybody that knows Pusha T that knows that he's gonna run laps all around you and if you come at him he will dig dirt and that dirt is dirty boy that dirt is dirty so that, that, that was a good one and um I'm pretty sure a lot of people have this as his album of the day but just not me bro like not me it, 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 when I name my top the, my top five Y'all, y'all will understand. Like, they're pushing T's, not pushing it, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Push. I love you. I love your music, bro. But you ain't pushing the top five for me. Just because of. Just, just listen. Just, just wait. Just wait. Till, I'm going to tell you why. All right, number five. This is a wild card. And this probably ain't going to be on nobody's top top 20, top 10, top 100. South Walker. Ghetto Gospel 3, it was released December 23rd, 2023, 2022. This album by this man mm. This album by this man, bro <laughs> The story the storytelling in this album is so deep, so real. Ghetto, he got some ghetto stuff in there. He got some ghetto stuff in there. Don't don't get me wrong about that, but it fits. The ghetto gospel fits. Like they're street rap, but this this album right here. 
flows, the the deep understanding, the the storytelling, the beat selection, the the grit in his voice, the the the, the willingness to not only tell about your life but also try to inspire at the same time, talk about like brother story, like come on bro, like brother story, like I I can't even. I visualized that 50 times in my head, bro, and it's just like, if you ever been in that situation where you, your, your life is like damn near at the end, or you getting set up, or you see somebody getting set up, it is different, and, it's, and he has multiple projects like that, or multiple songs like that, and I love how he brought two songs that he had from previous projects on this album, because they fit perfectly, Sauce Walker Top 5 number five like for sure there's 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 no there's no beating there's no beating that i, I wish i was gonna put my number three but i was like nah 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 let me not do that but top five anybody would love this project anybody sauce walker most definitely went out with a bang number four it's so fitting smino love for rent a lot of people won't disagree with this just based off of Hip hop and how it should sound. Smino, so, you know, this album. I, I wanted to give you album of the year so f- freaking bad. And between this and uh, Steve Lacey's project and Raven Raven Lanay's um, project, those, those three are the best sonically sound albums I've heard this year. I can listen to Love for Rent every day and what's crazy you know kids i do not promote you know smoking or getting high or doing doing anything like that but if you do i need you to listen to this album and then you will understand i don't even say no more it is it is is that good and usually I couldn't understand Smino because boy, his accent is deep. But then, once, and then it's not deep some more, bro. Like this, this album is is great. It, I love, I love it. I really do love it. <laughs> love for it. <laughs> Number three, Denzel Curry, melt my, melt my eyes, see your future. Now, this album. Is a part of the mental health aspect and growing in internally and learning from your mistakes and this this album I, I love so much just based on the flows, the lyrics, the understanding of his pain, the the aspects of Knowing that this album is not going nowhere. I'm going to cut that out. The, the, the aspect of this album, I feel like means a lot, not only for me, but a lot of people as well. Um, and the B selection and the placement of everything. And even his live album is just as good or even better. Um, I, I, I really do love this album and stuff. You know, when people make projects like this, just like just like Absol Westside Boogie, uh, it, it is different, and especially when it flows and the amount of tracks that he had, it's different, and. I was kind of like in between of this and Love for Ram being three or four, but like that the 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 level of difficulty that it takes to come up with the things that Denzel Curry came up with compared to Smino, it's a different level. Alright. <clears throat> now y'all hear me out, bro. Hear me out. I've been going back and forth with these top two. For so long, I I had to make a decision, and everybody in their mama. Look, I ain't gonna lie, I am a Kendrick fan. 
I love his music. By Kendrick. I feel like it's going to win album of the year for the Grammys and all these other awards just based off of, you know, politics. But I have number two, I have Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Morale, and the Big Steppers. And here's why. Each and every album Kendrick has dropped, he's always had a mission and he's always completed it. This has probably been the most difficult mission to accomplish. And a mission, I mean, not only was he trying to, not only was he trying to uh, talk about everything that has been going on in his life and everything that's around him, but able to put that into perspective of having a child and having two children now. And trying to please everyone and did this whole project and this is probably the most vulnerable project and probably the hmm, I'll say since he probably dropped didn't um damn but I mean no this has been the most vulnerable album of the year this is the most mental health project you probably hear from anybody this is probably the most honest you'll hear anybody and the fact that the only reason I was number two is because I feel like his mission was to make you know the the before and then the after which is i'm going through all this stuff here's my pain this is what i'm doing and then i get a breakthrough with therapy and this breakthrough is the second part and the introspective of including his own nephew and then including kodak which he sees into him who he thinks like he can most relate to and then having somebody that's bloodline it was smart it was very smart it was very it was very like to the point where i was like okay this is a masterpiece but my only thing with the two disc album is people will fall off and even i fell off i don't usually fall off when it comes to kendrick albums like i i can look you guys in the eye right now i don't do that like <clears throat> i'm always tuned in start to finish but this start to finish was a was a long start to finish but again it's not for our pleasure and and again this was a TDE last album. So, of course, he going to put two on there and give y'all the best of what he got. Will he come out with better and more? Yes. Is this his best out of his catalog? No. Like, this is number three. Then they got Damn. Then got To Pimp Butterfly. And if I can say that, this is, for this year, it's probably for most people's best and the best thing that it took it took a lot like those last couple of songs was a lot and a lot of people can't handle that and but i mean i can but it's just the long way he gave everybody what they wanted what he wanted and people were still going to accept it so great album thank you Krenjik, for this album because no other rapper would be doing that. They're not going to be doing that. Mm-mm. They're not going to be talking about that. And if you listen to the album, you know what I'm talking about. I don't have to reiterate that. I know this is me not being fake. This, this, is, this hip hop is real. It's about telling your story. It's not, it's, not all, it's not always about gang, gang, pop, pop. I'm that nigga. It's like okay we get it we know you are but what who are you and this album is it shows us who he is and what he has been going what has what has he been going through in these past couple of years so the most thing anybody can do when it comes to album is say thank you kendra but it's not the album of the year ladies and gentlemen drum roll the album of the year is jid's the forever story 
if anybody has anything to say about this and they want to disagree you can come see me or whatever i don't care you are dead wrong if you don't think jid's the forever story is the album of the year it's to the point it's straightforward it's it's a great it's great sound quality uh choices everything about this album fits perfectly and not only that we got the lighter flick from lil wayne we got yasin bay rapping in that hoe and it's just like bro like that this album was perfect bro like bro this was perfect it's like i can listen to this anywhere you can do that with anybody but this come on bro like I, we really do not have to get into it but i can get into it each and every song was placed correct was placed perfectly and if they would have cleared that 2007 song more people would be like yeah this is our mother year which i think they have the extended version and it is on there and it still fits it still fits raven Lene and him on that song was perfect um earth game was perfect it's like he he knew what he was doing and um brother them and sister them like you from the south bro like this dude this dude's album was perfect and nobody can tell me otherwise you can't like you literally like before making this list i'm i'm not making this list and be like oh i like them it's like no whole project because everybody project is is for one not everybody's going to get all these albums that have been put out this year there's no way you're going to be able to understand everything that everybody was saying in these albums but the only difference between this and kendrick is literally kendrick had a double cd or a double double album and he tried to make it one and he kind of lost some people in between JD has your attention from start to finish. From start to finish, you feel his family, you feel his stories, you you, you feel like you you feel like in this album you feel like you are in his family. You are you are um, with him while when he's in the club when his sister got hit in the face. You are with you 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 feel like you are you are him when you're understanding about him talking about his brothers and always being there for them and it is just every everything i felt every everything every every freaking track bro every every track cody blue 31 if you ever down listen to that best um best Best song or best production, money. Better days was good. <clears throat> Surround sound, like bro, like he it hits. It just hits. Like he he knew where to place people. He knew where to place himself. I think that's very important too. To where to know where to know where you know like the right placement is just perfect. And again, y'all, I'm not no expert, so like this ain't gonna be no. You know what I'm saying? They still gonna live their lives. They still gonna make their money. They still gonna travel. This is just my favorite. And JID has the album of the year. JID, thank you. Thank you, brother. Because you made a masterpiece. JID's album, The Forever Story, to me, to me, is his good kid, Mad City. And it's gonna it's gonna happen the same way. It's gonna be this great album. It's not gonna get it's not gonna get us awards like it should. And then five years down the road, people gonna be like, "Dang, you still listen to Forever Story?" Yes, because it's that good. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I, I'll probably do this again next year. I probably made the I probably do some reaction to some you know some some albums coming out in 2023. Um God willing. So you guys have a blessed 2023. You guys have a blessed um
time and I appreciate you guys watching. And I'm starting to get back in the hang of making videos again. So after taking a long two year break and deleting everything, um, I'm glad I did this. So I'll see y'all again. My name is Dacian. Peace out. Love y'all. All love. And if any hip hop person sees this shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> It was 1,700 albums. But no, I ain't doing that. All right, y'all. Peace.